Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and this is the beginning of a new mini series on the channel. Now in this series, I am gonna go over all the bombs and the explosives that there are in HBM squad. Now as there are quite few of them, it is gonna be a two or three part series and yeah, we are gonna cover all the bombs, the basic bombs, the nuclear, thermonuclear bombs, anti-mass type bombs. So yeah guys, it's highly recommended that you use the timestamps in the video as this is gonna be a long one and also not enough items for all the recipes. So without any further ado guys, let's get straight in this video. So before we can start taking a look at all the different explosives, the very first thing that we are going to see is how to trigger these explosives. So the very first method that we are going to take a look at is the most basic one which is by powering it with redstone. So if I place a redstone torch here, boom. So yeah, this is the most basic method of powering any kind of explosive that you have by providing it with redstone signal. Now the second method is to use a detonator. So shift right click on the explosive and then right click again to make it go boom. Now the good thing is the detonator will remember the position of the explosive so you don't have to set it again. You aren't the brightest chicken out there are you? Boom. So yeah that is the detonator. Now the third one is the multi detonator and it is similar to the detonator but it can trigger multiple targets at the same time no matter how far they are. So here if I shift right click on all three of these bombs you will see that by right clicking once all three of them will go off. Bam. So this is pretty useful too. And finally my favorite method of using bombs is the laser detonator. So the laser detonator will detonate any bomb or explosive that it is pointing at. But make sure the thing that you are pointing at should be able to explode. So now that we have taken a look at the different methods, we are going to take a look at barrels which are not explosive by themselves but they can be used to enhance the explosions. So in order to demonstrate this, first I am going to show you how a detonator cord explosion looks like normally. Boom. So as you can see, it's not a very big explosion, only a 5 by 5 area of effect and it is one block deep, right? So it is even smaller than a vanilla TNT explosion. But now let's enhance this. So I'm gonna place an explosive barrel beside the detonator cord and then let's make it go boom. And as you can see, the explosion is way bigger, a 7x7 seven seven explosion which is too deep and also it spawns fire everywhere. Now this holds true for the kerosene barrels too. So if I place a kerosene barrel beside a detonator cord and then explode the detonator cord, you will see that the explosion is nearly the same size and it did nearly the same damage with fire spawning everywhere. Now the strongest explosion will result from the radioactive barrel. And yeah, not only the explosion will be way bigger, it will also contaminate the area where it was exploded. So if you walk in this area, as you can see here, I have the contaminated effect. So it is pretty good to ruin your friend's base. Now one way you can use all these different barrels is to make traps. So for example, here I have a Vix Modern Warfare grenade. Now you can see the normal grenade doesn't do much, but if I trigger those barrels with these grenades, boom. Now the explosion was way bigger and it has now contaminated the area. So these barrels are useful to make traps for your friends or your enemies. Now that we have taken a look at the barrels, let's take a look at some of the basic explosives. So the very first one is the detonator cord and the detonator cord works like a fuse for real bombs. So if I trigger one of the cords, the entire line will blow instantly. So that is why it can be used as a fuse to trigger explosives from a very large distance. So as you can see, I have a pretty big line of detonator cord and as I explode one of them, the entire line goes off. Pretty useful stuff. Now the second one that we are going to see is the explosive charge and it is going to be your bread and butter. So if I place an explosive charge here, the boom or basically the explosion is going to be pretty big. Yes, you can see thus there is going to be a lot of smoke and it will knock back any enemy or any entity that is standing on it. So yeah, this is going to be your bread and butter explosive for this mod. Now the third bomb is pretty unique. It is called the levitation bomb. But to test this, we are, need, we are going to need some visitors or some you know volunteers so who better than a friendly neighborhood villagers 
So let's spawn some villagers to test what the levitation bomb does. So I'm gonna spawn four of them and then detonate this bomb. Boom. And as you can see, a big chunk out of the ground just disappeared and now it is levitating in the air above it. So this is what the levitation bomb does. It takes out a chunk out of the ground or the base and then makes it levitate up in the sky. And as you can see, any entity standing on top of it will be inverted upside down. So it's a pretty funny acting bomb. So now let's test the fourth bomb, which is the endothermic bomb. And as the name suggests, the endothermic bomb will basically reduce any heat from the nearby entities and freeze them. So if I explode it, bam, all the villagers are now frozen and they also have a status effect. So in order to show what the status effect is, I'm going to explode this bomb one again so that I can freeze myself. And now that if I check my status, there I have weakness, slowness 3 and mining fatigue 3. Now let's check out the exothermic bomb, which is the opposite of the endothermic bomb. It will set any living entity within its radius on fire. So yeah, let's put these villagers out of their misery and explode one more exothermic bomb. And boom. Now we are going to check out the EMP bomb. And in order to check it out, I have set this missile launcher full of 100 kilo HG energy. So the EMP bomb will release an electromagnetic pulse and any machine caught in its radius, it will be drained completely out of energy. So you can use it to disable your enemy's defenses. And finally, we have the mining charge. Or not sorry, we have the flame war in a box. And the flame war in a box used to spawn flames everywhere in a big radius, but it is not doing that currently. I don't know why, but yeah. Even though it is not spawning a lot of flames, it still has a pretty big area of explosion. So now, see carefully the explosion that happens. Did you see that? How wide that was? It damaged a huge area around it. So this is the flame war in a box. It deals a huge amount of AOE damage. And finally, there is the mining charge. And as the name suggests, it is used to mine. Bam. So now these were all the basic explosives that you needed to know. And now let's take a look at something different, which are the mines. So there are three types of mines, the anti-personal mine, anti-tank mine and the shrapnel mine. Now the anti-personal mine is a very small mine and as you walk over it, it will damage you and it will knock you back. Now it is best used in hidden or basically when you, the mine is camouflaged. So if I make a grassy area here with double tall grass. Now this area here is perfect to hide a small anti-personal mine. So if I place a mine here and cover the area with grass, no one is gonna sus suspect that there is a mine here. And anyone who walks over it, boom, they are gonna take damage. Then there is the anti-tank mine. And as the name suggests, it is used for countering tanks. Now it has a pretty big explosion compared to the anti-personal mine, which you are gonna see here, boom. So yeah, the explosion was pretty big and yeah. And finally, there is the shrapnel mine, which doesn't have that big of an area of damage, but it will spawn shrapnel, which will fall in the nearby area, damaging mobs that are around it. Now, one thing that you have to remember is mines that are placed beside each other will damage or rather will explode when one of the mines is triggered. So if I spawn a lot of villagers and boom. Now as you saw there, just by detonating one single mine, every mine within its radius exploded. Now finally, we are going to take a look at three of the main bombs. The first one being the multipurpose bomb. And the multipurpose bomb can be only triggered or can be only armed by using TNT. You can't use any other charge for arming it. We only need one elect TNT. So place four TNT charges like this and now this bomb is up and ready to explode. So if I take my laser detonator, boom. Now the explosion in its base form is not pretty big. It is a normal sized explosion. So what I'm going to do is we are going to enhance this multipurpose bomb. And there are five types of enhancement that you can use. Now the very first enhancement is the gunpowder 
which will increase the blast radius of the bomb. The second enhancement is the red phosphorus enhancement, which will turn this bomb into an incendiary bomb. It will spawn fire everywhere. The third one being the explosive pellets, which will deal a huge area of effect damage. And the fourth one is the poisonous powder, which will basically poison any enemy who are in the vicinity. So first, let's test out the gunpowder. Now, as I have placed the gunpowder, this bomb has more explosion power. So if I... Okay. Let's spawn some villagers. Otherwise, it won't be as much fun as it should be. So now that we have some villagers to witness the explosion, boom. So as you can see, the explosion was way more powerful than just the base version of the bomb. Now the second one we are gonna test is the red phosphorus version. Or rather the explosive pellets. So that we can see what the area of effect damage looks like. So once again, let's spawn in some spectators and see how the explosive pellets do. As you can see, most of them were blown away. So yeah, the explosion becomes pretty powerful with these explosive pellets. Now the third one that we are going to test will be the red phosphorus one so that we can turn this multipurpose bomb into an incendiary bomb. So once again, let's spawn in some spectators. And now you will see that why these villagers are perfect for these experiments. Look at that villager standing on a live bomb. Now this is my favorite version of the bomb, the incendiary version, because it deals damage and it will continuously deal damage due to the fire. Now the fourth form will come in form of the poison powder. So let's arm the bomb once again and place in some poison powder. And now any enemy who is standing or any mob who is standing in this area, they will be exposed to a lot of poison. So even if they won't die from the explosion, they are gonna die from poison. And finally, the fifth enhancement comes in the form of poison cartridges or the gas cartridges. Now this, what it will do is it will spread poisonous gas in a huge area and anyone in that area will take constant damage and they will be blinded by the poisonous gas, which I will demonstrate in a little bit. So as you can see, there is a poisonous gas which contains chlorine and if I walk into that, you will see that I will be blinded temporarily. Here. Now this effect isn't permanent, but you are going to take a lot of damage. Now the second most interesting mine is the N45 naval mine. And it can accept detonator core, TNTs, explosive charge and nuclear charge. But we are going to skip the nuclear one and use the explosive charge as this video is not about nuclear bombs. So now that I have a simple explosive charge in the N45 naval mine, I can simply trigger it by a laser detonator. Boom. Now, what is interesting about this N45 mine is that it can be used in detector mode as well. So if I take a green upgrade, a green machine upgrade, and there are three levels, I'm gonna go for the MK3 upgrades. It is gonna turn this mine into a detector mine. Let me show that instead of saying it. So if I place the green upgrade here and then I'm going to place a single explosive charge in this slot right here. Now see what happens when I try to detonate this mine. Let me do that again. Did you see that? This means that our mine is now armed and it is detecting any entity in its radius. Now as I walked in its radius, it exploded. So this is how you can basically turn your N45 naval mine into a detector mine. And now finally, we have the N2 mine. The N2 stands for non-nuclear, N squared, N2, whatever you would like to call it. And in order to arm this bomb, you need 12 large explosives. So it won't explode. If you don't place 12 of them, it needs to be 12 large explosive charges. And this has a pretty big explosive range, 200 blocks. My laptop is gonna lag, so yeah, be ready for that. Now it forms the mushroom cloud, but as it is not nuclear, it will not spawn any radiation or any type of fallout anywhere. It just deals pure damage in a 200 block radius. 
so as you can see i currently have zero fps this is how hard you are gonna lag if you don't have a good setup like me and yeah now let's wait for it when you look at that damage it's literally 200 blocks in radius no doubt i was lagging so hard so this is one of the most powerful bombs but not the most powerful bomb in this mod and the good thing is it only damages it doesn't deal any radiation damage so yeah there is less lag compared to other bombs so that was all i had for this video guys we are gonna cover the nuclear and the thermonuclear bombs in the next video so yeah i hope you guys liked it if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out my guys stay safe